Why do I use a Mac again? What's going on YouTube? Yes, today we're taking a deep dive into HP's Z2 Mini. And guys, this is supposed to be their Mac Studio killer. So we're gonna challenge that. We're gonna take a look at everything from aesthetics and IO to performance and usability, all of those things with me using everything from DaVinci Resolve to edit videos to just web browsing and general things like that. So if that sounds like the video you came to see, hit the subscribe button and click the bell so you don't miss as we cover all things tech, Apple Talk and Pro Audio. I'm Chris Grant Jr. It's the Granite Geek Show. Before we get started, if you like the music in today's video, check out the link down below to Upbeat. They are my favorite music subscription service for creatives. I've used them in every single video that I've made since I found them, and it's also a cool way to help out the channel. Now, here's how the video is gonna break down in case you wanna jump ahead to different chapters. I'll have the time code down in the description below. So we're gonna start off with my first impressions, just what I think of the device. Uh, then we're gonna talk about the IO and aesthetics. We're gonna talk specs. Then I'm gonna show you my daily workflow using it and how I've gotten used to Windows. Uh, and then finally, we're going to wrap it up with my overall thoughts. So diving right in, first impressions, I got to say, this thing looks sick. I love the jet black design, the aggressive vents without being super stylized. You're not going to find any RGB going on here, uh, although I do like my RGB. I, this thing is professional through and through. It's got the Z logo, so you know that it means business. Uh, but just from an aesthetic standpoint, I got to give the nod to it versus the Mac Studio and Mac Mini as they generally have the same design. Now, another thing that I love about this machine, and it used to be a benefit of owning a Mac as well, but is no longer, and that is customizability and user upgradeability. Guys, there's a latch on the back of this thing. You can open it up and keep your device current with uh, SSDs and RAM and etc. We'll get more on that during the specs portion of this video. But yes, these are just a few of the things that really have me thinking aesthetically and just from a usability standpoint, uh, this device has the Mac Studio Studio beat. Now, speaking of that, let's talk about I.O. Um, and that is where, well, unfortunately, again, I, I'm going to give the nod to the Z2 Mini Workstation because it has customizable I.O. in addition to just an incredible array of ports from the jump. So starting real simple, we have the power LED, which is just a clean, simple white LED to indicate power. Um, to the right of that, you got your Z logo. Then on the side, we have a plastic cutout and that's for the antenna. And then we have one type A USB port that's good for 10 gigabits. And then we have two, count them, two USB-C ports on the side, okay, at 20 gigabits. So these are no joke USB-C ports. And then of course, we have our headphone jack. Now, turning it around on the back, this is where things get really, really interesting. First is the cover release latch, which allows us to get inside the device and change and upgrade the components, uh, followed by the power connector. Then we have two DisplayPort 1.4 ports. I always get confused saying DisplayPort ports. It's redundant. Now to the right of the display ports, this is where things start to get interesting. We have a cutout here and this is what they're calling a flex IO slot. This means that you can customize what ports you're gonna have on it depending on your needs. This could be anything from HDMI to extra Thunderbolt ports or USB-C, what have you. And this is amazing for so many different pros, whether they're working in video or music or, or art, you name it, they can take advantage of this port right here. Now below the cover release slot, we have our Kensington lock and then and below that, we also have our ethernet port. And it gets interesting yet again with the two slots they have for PCIe customizable ports where you can put anything in from graphics cards to more USB ports. Uh, so flexibility of IO is to the nines and totally blows away what I thought was already an amazing offering with the Mac Studio. And then there's like a little nib uh, to the far left of the device sticking out and that is yet another antenna. Also for IO on the very bottom of the device, we actually have vase amount compatibility. So you can put this on any kind of rig uh, so that it's off of your desk and out of the way. So certainly from a standpoint of IO and aesthetics, I gotta give the nod to the HP Z2. Now moving on to the specs department, we're talking about a company Apple used to work with. Yes, this is Intel's 3.2 gigahertz 16 core i9, and this is their 129,000K model. And its single core performance actually beats the M1 series chips found in the Mac Studio. 
Now, in terms of multi-core, the Mac Studio does win out with a Geekbench score well over 23,000, but what you have to keep in mind is this is with 20 cores, as where the HP scores over 17,000 with only 16 cores. So we could argue they're on par if you add another four cores to the HP Z2 Mini. Now, in terms of graphics, NVIDIA is helping out here with their A2000 series chip, and that has 12 gigabytes of dedicated sweet video RAM. And let me tell you, using this uh, for video editing, it has been a breeze. I've been able to do things with this machine that I've never been able to do on a Mac, period. And I've had some high-end Macs. But hey, if Apple has taught us anything, it's that specs don't mean everything. Often, it's user experience that wins the day. And so from there, I wanna talk exactly about that. My experience with the Z2 Mini, in addition to using Windows, more specifically Windows 11 Pro, for the first time in over 10 years. And well, honestly, there wasn't a lot of drama. I mean, I'm still a nerd at heart, and so the basics of Windows were just ingrained. Like, there wasn't a, a huge learning curve. Um, I knew it very much like I know Mac OS in terms of the basics. And so getting set up in terms of downloading Firefox as my primary browser, getting a fresh copy of DaVinci Resolve downloaded so that I could play around with video editing, all that stuff was really quick and simple. Um, I actually downloaded Resolve 18, which is still in beta, but I've had no issues with it. Um, it's been extremely quick and I've actually been able to, yes, do things that I wasn't able to do on any Mac that I've ever owned. And that is in Resolve, I was able to edit video while the video was playing editing, adding effects, all those things while the video ran smoothly without dropping frames. Not only this M1, but I'm talking pre with the Intel chips, um, plugging in eGPUs. I have one of the top eGPUs, I forget the name now because they changed so much, um, through Thunderbolt and I still wasn't able to get that kind of performance. So the A2200 with uh, NVIDIA with the 12 dedicated gigabytes of video RAM, the 16 core, Intel i9, um, in this case, the specs really punch for it uh, in terms of performance, at least in DaVinci Resolve. Now, that's not to say the experience was flawless, as I did notice some dropped frames when adding digital effects. But I'm pretty sure with the horsepower this thing has, these errors could be due to the beta. Now, of course, a huge benefit of owning a PC versus a Mac is the plethora of gaming that you have access to. And of course, Apple is trying to make headroom in terms of their gaming prowess, but it's nowhere near right now what Windows has to offer. And man, the gaming performance was awesome. It was like having a console. Like, honestly, why go and spend the money on a PS5 or an Xbox, right, when you can have a PC that is so raw power uh, that you can not only get all your work done, but also play games. And with Windows, you can plug up an Xbox controller. And personally, I prefer a controller over keyboard and mouse. I know, PC gamers, no! But um, when you have that kind of power, why would you even need a console? And so that was uh, really impressive for me. And with the access to certain titles that I like to play, I could definitely see myself doing more gaming um, on PC. Okay, so that's all fine and dandy. We've talked about specs, IO, aesthetics, right, performance. What is this big thing that that the Z2 Mini has taught me as an Apple fanboy that I think every Apple user should contemplate, especially with these new M2 devices and seeing what Apple is doing with performance for these devices. I, I began to think about why I use Mac in particular. When you have a PC that is snappy, runs virus free, has the software that I want, and even has advantages like uh, better IO and IO flexibility and options and gaming, um, it starts to whittle away all the things that you thought you only used Mac for. I used to use Mac because it's just, it never slows down, it just works, right? It, it's virus free and it runs and runs and runs, it holds its value, right? Those are benefits to using Mac. But this machine takes away a lot of those advantages. And so what I'm left with is the walled garden, to be quite honest. In terms of the Z2 Mini, we're presented here with a high build quality black slate metal finish machine that outspecs even the Mac Studio in terms of single core performance. And even though it's less in multi-core performance, you have to remember that this is a 16 core device is where the Mac Studio has 20 cores. So pound for pound, this is a more powerful machine. And then if you're using a multi-platform software like DaVinci Resolve, like I do, um, it works just as 
well on PC as it does on a Mac. These questions are real and I had to address them. And the answer for me is, yeah, I like iMessage. Yeah, I like iOS. I like the fact that my Mac plays well and is so well integrated with my iPad and my iPhone. And so it's those other devices that anchor me down to the Mac as well. Now, as an Apple fanboy, I personally believe there will be a day where there are no benefits to PC over Mac. Um, certainly PC is more well spread out in enterprise and things like that and gaming and all these things. I think there's, there will come a time where those advantages are taken away. And when that day comes, it's gonna be awesome because I'll not only have all the advantages the PC people have, but I'll have amazing intuitive user interfaces and integrated uh, functionality with iOS and iMessages and all these kind of things, continuity, even dragging your mouse cursor between your iPad and your Mac, that's really sick as well. So, but until that day comes, I have to recognize that it's really just those softwares and integrated usability that's keeping me here because it's no longer performance. So I got a shout out HP. They did incredible work with the Z2 Mini workstation. Of course, the link to go and pick one of these up if you want to will be in the description below. It is an incredible machine. And while I do have to give it back, I've enjoyed every single day using it, especially comparing and contrasting with the M1 Mac Mini. Now, what's crazy is this M1 Mac Mini I'm gonna point to the box, even though the machine is actually over there. Anyway, is that this thing only costs five, $600. And in single core performance, it's within like 200 points of a $2,500 machine, which that's gonna be a win for Apple. Anyway, thanks so much for watching and stay tuned. I know there's a lot of drama going on with the M2s and the M2 MacBook Air and stuff. Um, so I'm gonna give my commentary on that. So if you wanna be around for that, the only way to be there is to hit the subscribe button and click the bell so you get notified when I drop a new video as we cover all things tech, Apple Talk, and Pro Audio. I'm Chris Grant Jr. It's the Granite Geek Show.